Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. You guys see me right now on Wednesdays and Thursdays, but things are going to be different, and you're going to see me at different times and different places. Uh, but we are on Pray First, and it's a conversation we have Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. We are in the Bible Project, and Pastor's Dennis and Brandy and Ann are also reading the scripture. They have completed the entire New Testament, and you guys are into the Old Testament. We have Bibles planted in, I think it's 30-something states now. Did, did you hear what I just said? We have Bibles in time capsules in like 30-something states in the ground. I'm going to be sharing those pictures with you. We have pictures of where they were planted, how they were planted. We also have the coordinates. I may or may not give you those because I don't want somebody, not you guys, but you know, some treasure hunter or some geocacher to go find them and dig them up. Um, one day, I hope to go and visit all 50 of them and take a picture there and maybe possibly, I'm not sure, put something else in there or beside it. I don't know. Good morning, Kat. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Julia. Good morning, Corrine. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Laura. Before we get into today's all of God conversation uh, that we began on yesterday, that's a good place to start. If you didn't see yesterday, you need to see yesterday. But this one's a standalone, so stay live. If you missed yesterday, go back and watch it after uh, today's uh, conversation. But some of you have signed up to be part of my small group, the small group teaching that we're going to be launching this weekend at Cross Point Church. Some of you have signed up to be part of Kingdom Disciples with me and Dr. Tony Evans. Uh, I'm going to read your names, and if I don't have your name and you want to be part of it, you need to let me know. Now, this is very important. This is not for Cross Point Blocker Street Campus people. You guys have groups. Um, I think it's right at 60% of Cross Point people are in a small group. If you're not in one, you can get in one this weekend. That is the small group launch. Here are the people I have for the online group. Nita K, Stacy Matlock, Tracy Hodge, Corrine Sticky, Stickley, Candy Cowan, Mel Cowan, Melissa Oaks, Tom and Becky Rogers, Kat Salyards, Sherry Hurst, Patty and Bill Hagen. If I don't have your name, you need to contact me. Not right here. I may or may not see what you post, but let me know that you want to be part. It's going to start Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon at four. Sunday afternoon at four or five. I'm on to decide. Um, there is a book, Nita K, but um, the price has gone from five dollars to fourteen ninety nine. It's on Lifeway. It's called Kingdom Disciples. Um, there's also a version of it on the U version app for free. Um, you kind of need the book. I might can help you. I don't have any more books. Uh, we sold out of all the five dollar ones. Um, that we had gotten. But yeah, there is one. It's called Kingdom Disciples. It's on Lifeway. And you can get it late. You don't have to have it to be part of the group. So we've been talking about the awe of God and hearing the Word of God and the message of God. On yesterday, we talked about, and I don't want to do too much recapping because I want you to go back and watch it, the Gospels. When I talk about the Gospels, that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Two of those were original disciples. Okay, Matthew and John. Mark and Luke were not. Luke was a physician. Mark was a friend of Peter. Luke said, I've heard about Jesus. I'm going to investigate Jesus. And he went about investigating all the claims, gathering information, to see, could this man really be who he said he was? And he come to the conclusion, this wasn't one of the Kool-Aid drinkers. This wasn't one of the Kool-Aid drinking disciples. Luke was an outsider. Luke was an educated person. He was a physician. And he come to the conclusion that this man really was who he said he was, that he really had been crucified, that he already knew. But that he had also risen from the grave. Pretty powerful. 
Those four books, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we call them books. They are documents and diaries of day-to-day -day historical activities. They're not books. Matthew wasn't writing a book. He didn't sit down and think, I'm going to write a book. Neither did Mark, Luke, or John. In those four documents of the Gospels, Jesus is referred to as the teacher 48 times. Everybody hashtag 48. Those, those four documents alone, he is referred to as the teacher 48 times. Many atheists, many atheists, um, professors, many atheist philosophers, educators, claim that Jesus was one of the greatest teachers of all time. They don't believe his content. They don't practice his content. They believe that he was a great presenter, a great teacher, a great possible prophet, a great uh, standard bearer, moral keeper, values promoter. They believe that. But they do not believe he is, or they do not follow him as Lord. They do not follow him as Lord. I'm going to say that one more time. Many atheists believe that Jesus was a great teacher, maybe one of the greatest teachers that ever lived, but they do not follow him as their Lord. But everyone who heard him speak said, this man, this man is like no other. No one speaks the way he speaks. He has such authority given to him from God. So that brings us to number one. Jesus taught with, and we're going to continue this conversation, but this is point number one. Jesus taught with, number one, he was authoritative. Authoritative. Number one, Jesus taught authoritatively, if you want to write the whole word. That's authoritative L-Y. That's an adverb. He taught authoritatively. He taught with authority. He taught like no one they'd ever heard before. He wasn't relaying a message necessarily, though he was. He was the message. The people had never seen God, but Jesus said, If you've seen me, you have seen my Father. Show us the Father. Show us the Father. Show us God, teacher. And Jesus' authority was, I'm not explaining someone. I am someone. I know I'm not going to say anything on my own authority, but I'm going to tell you what the Father said. That was an explanation. That was, if you want to know what my father would do in a certain situation, Jesus would say, watch me. If you want to know what my father would say in a certain situation, listen to what I say. If you want to know what to do, Jesus would say, watch me. If you want to know what to say, Jesus would say, Listen to me. Jesus taught authoritatively. Matthew chapter 7, I know I'm harping on it, but it's so important. Verses 28 and 29. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings. What had he ended? He had just ended the Sermon on the Mount. That the people were astonished. Everybody say astonished. The people were astonished. And I know we use words like that and we don't think about their meaning. So let's do this. Hey, Google, define astonished. Here's the definition of astonished. Greatly surprised or impressed. Amazed. They were amazed. They were impressed. When, when the disciples heard Jesus pray, they said, whoa, whoa. Teach us how to talk to God like that. They were reciting things. They were repeating things. But Jesus was talking to the Father in his prayers as if his Father cared, as if his Father were present, as if his Father would answer, 
as if his father was Abba, Daddy, and yet God. And then when he teaches his disciples to pray, Jesus says, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father. That's astonishing. When we get into the routine of Christianity and when we get into the routine of Bible study and we get into the routine of devotional, we'll read right through that little phrase and, and, and not understand what is being suggested there. That you, Brooke, Patty, Vivian, Laura, Becky, Barbie, that, that, that you, Chip, that you, Ed, that you, Doug, that you, Jennifer, are sons and daughters of God. Just that, that you, Pat, that you, Raymond, are sons and daughters of God of God, the creator of the universe, the one who has the power to give you a dream, and the one who has the power to make that dream come true, the one that has the power to not end at death, but begin anew, the one who has the power to walk you through the valley of the shadow of death with no fear. The one who has the power to set tables in the presence of your enemies and call time out to your betrayers and say, come rest, come, come feast. The one who has the power to give you peace when there is no understandable circumstances that would dictate peace in your life, that Jesus, the Son of God, God himself, incarnate, said, when you pray, how about you just go ahead and call him what he is? God's your Father. What? He's your daddy. He's, he, Jesus said, he's not just my father, when you pray, you say, Our Father. Jesus had that kind of authority. The other teachers of the law and the other explainers of the Pentateuch or at Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the books of the law, they didn't have the authority to say that. They didn't have the authority to grant sonship and daughtership and priesthood and kingship. They didn't, they didn't have the authority to do that. My, my, my point is, when you come into the presence of the Word of God, you need to be prepared to be astonished. To take the time to allow the Holy Spirit to explain the Word, empower the Word. Jesus taught with authority. There was authority in his teaching. Why, am, why do I keep saying that? I feel like I have to say it over and over again, and I want to continue. Jesus taught with authority. There was authority in his teaching. I'm not even doing that. I can't even stop saying it. But when we get into the church routine, that we come and we hear a sermon. Oh, I hate that word. That we come and we listen to a message. Love that word. That we can get to the point that we've been inoculated to the truth because we have been injected with just enough vaccine to keep us from being fully engulfed in the authority of the word of God. We've gotten just enough. That sure, I know that verse. I know what that means. I've heard that a thousand times. That one verse out of the 15 that we just read, that one's on my refrigerator. And, and we have this preconceived direction that that word is going or that that word stands for. But that word is living. That word is active. It is Jesus himself. It is powerful. It is authoritative. 
authoritative. It is author it has authority even when you don't understand it. It's like yesterday we were talking about the Pharisees had sent the temple guard down to arrest Jesus and they came back without Jesus and the temple asked, where is Jesus? We sent you to arrest Jesus. And they said, no man ever spoke that way. Their agenda had been arrested. <laughs> they couldn't arrest Jesus because their agenda, agenda had been arrested. Their preconceived notions had been paralyzed. Their, their, their concepts had, had been criminalized. They, didn't, they, they, they were under an authority they didn't even know they were under. They couldn't explain it. They didn't. He speaks like no one we've ever heard before. Seven times in the book of Revelation, and you and I have talked about this uh, fairly recently, when the elders, the 24 elders sitting on the 24 thrones that represent the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 original apostles that surround the encircled rainbow of the throne of God where Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, when they hear Jesus speak, every time they hear Jesus speak, seven times in Revelation, the 24 elders fall off their chairs, lay on their face, in awe, in astonishment. Many philosophers believe and many theologians believe the reason they fall off their chairs every time, for eternity it is explained, is because every time they look at him, they see something new. Every time they hear him, they hear something fresh. Every time they explore God, there's, there, there's new places in him to be found. That the space and the room is infinite. That there's always something to learn, always something to know. We should be in awe of the word of God. We should prepare ourselves for that. We should be psyching ourselves up for our Bible study, for pray first, for the message at your church, understanding that God has something to speak to me. Hey, Google, define all. Here's the definition of all, used to refer to the whole quantity or extent hey, Google, of a particular group. Define A-W-E. Here's the definition of awe, a feeling of reverential respect mixed with fear or wonder. Reverential ex respect. Wonder. These elders fall down and worship God every time they look at God because they see something that they'd never seen before for all eternity. And the reason these men and these women in the book of Matthew chapter 13, 54, Matthew chapter 22, verse 33, every time they heard the teachings of Jesus, they were astonished is because the rabbis had only repeated what they'd heard before. And no rabbi could contradict another rabbi. The only way a non-Holy Spirit-filled rabbi could come up with something new, listen to me because this is going to, it's going to hit differently when you think about it. The only way a rabbi before Jesus who was not filled with the Holy Spirit could come up with something new to teach, you, okay, they, they were astonished when they heard Jesus speak. Uh, the temple guard said, we've never heard a man speak like this before. They were in shock. They were in awe. Oh, everybody just couldn't believe how he spoke. The reason is, is because the rabbis only repeated. They, they could not disagree with another rabbi. The only way they could come up with something new was to create another law, to create another rule, to create another have to. Doesn't that sound familiar? Doesn't that sound like the church? Doesn't that sound like shepherds with pulpits? And not staffs? My friend Jennifer Potts said something that just blew me away yesterday. Shepherds don't have pulpits. Woo! And when we understand that we're all shepherds and we're all speaking to our Heavenly Father and we're all, not just Pastor Doug is saying our Father in Heaven or my Father in Heaven, but the Great Shepherd, the Good Shepherd, Jesus, the Good Shepherd, the Door, the Way, tells you and I, 
not Pastor Doug alone, but us to say our father, because we're following in the family business, we're shepherds also. Shepherds don't have pulpits. Shepherds have staffs that comfort and protect the people who don't have the light or the salt or the peace that surpasses understanding. The people that are staggering in fear and chaos. The people who are wandering. The people who are alone. The people who are tormented by the spirits inside of them. Shepherds don't have pulpits. Wow, that got me. Coming up with new rules. Coming up with new tasks, to-dos. The only new revelation they could come up with in their sermon was come up with a new law, and they came up with 640 of those so that you could keep the 10 that God had. It's powerful. Jesus is the greatest teacher who ever lived, and we have his teachings in the Word of God. Let me say this, let me wrap it up. If you knew that Jesus was going to be speaking at your local church family this weekend, would you go? If he was coming back, and this weekend, for you Cross Pointians, he's going to be at Cross Point, or for you guys at South Point, at South Point, or Compel, or if you knew that Jesus was going to be speaking at First Baptist Anchorage, if you knew that he was going to be at the Methodist Church in Seoul, South Korea, if you knew that he was going to be at the Uganda United uh, Redemptive Butterbean, whatever, church, would you go? Would you be there? Would you be prepared? Would you be expectant? Would you be expected that Jesus would speak to you? That he would have something to say? He does. And I'm telling you, you cannot imagine how much you miss when God prepares a word for the sheep of his pasture. You say, I can hear him at home. Yes, you can. Jesus was crystal clear, do not forsake the assembly because the shepherd has something to say to you. The word is going to be opened. The word is going to be explained. The very thing you don't have today that you needed could have been fed the three weeks you skipped. And, and, and I'm saying that is in an encouraging way, not in any kind of a disciplinary way. Certainly not in a punishing way. I know how much I need the word. And I know when he speaks to us corporately, he speaks to us differently than he speaks to me personally. How do I know that? Because I am a shepherd. And when he speaks to me, he's very clear about the personal things going on in my life. And it's why I have to have my own personal time with God that does not have anything to do with me preparing the word for the weekend. Because when he prepares a word for the weekend, he's thinking about Lana. He's thinking about Chip. He's thinking about Samantha. He's thinking about Marilyn. He's, he's thinking about Tasha. When, when, he, when he has me sit down and prepare the weekend message, he's thinking about Jennifer. He's thinking about Brock. He's thinking about Melissa. He's thinking about Ed. He's thinking about Brandy. He's thinking about Dennis. When he sits me down to prepare the weekend message, he's preparing one word that will speak in the language of every listener. And they'll hear different things. Though it's a, though it's a unique, unified direction Everybody will hear something in their own language. I don't know that language, but God speaks it. And the very thing you needed today is the thing you missed. The last three weeks, God prepared a message and sent it to be delivered. There's no reason for that anymore. The awe and the astounding reverence of God's word is available on our app, probably your church as well, YouTube, me, but listen, you don't eat out of everybody's pasture. God has you in a local pasture for a reason. 
He's got unique things and unique spirits assigned to fight the unique spirits that are assigned the principalities over families, cities, counties, states. Come on. God doesn't call you to a church building. He calls you to a city, an area, a community, a, a principality. And he arms you for that. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that we hear, I've been coming to church forever. God, renew a right spirit in me, in Jesus. Renew a right spirit in me. I know it glitched. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. I'll see you this weekend. Bye, everybody.